Okay, so in this lesson we're going to be thinking all about dissolving, um, which is one of the new things that you need to understand now that we're dealing with particles of different sizes. Um, we're going to look at what happens in that. So the, the lesson objective for today is to understand what dissolving is and how it occurs, and we're also going to look at some uh, of the key vocabulary that you're going to need. So you've seen dissolving lots of times before. What I've got here is a glass of water. And let's just say that uh, I've got a really bad sweet tooth, so I want to dissolve some sugar in my water. So I've got some sugar here, and I've got my water, and I'm going to put my sugar in the water. I'll just grab a spoon. And let's move the camera where you can see what's happening. So I'm going to put a spoonful of sugar straight into my water, like this. And you can see it's gone kind of cloudy. But if I give it a stir and wait a few seconds and keep stirring, you can see that I can't see the sugar anymore. So this is something that a lot of students find really weird. If you can't see the sugar anymore, where is it gone? Um, so I've got a little concept map for you to have a look at here. This is a cartoon of some people thinking, and they've just seen the same experiment. So we've got a couple of different ideas here that students tend to say when they see something dissolved. So remember, here's my water now. You can not You can see just at the bottom here, there are a few little grains of sugar, but nearly all of them seem to have disappeared. So could that be true? Has the sugar really disappeared? Well, if you think about it, we should be able to tell that pretty simply. We can just taste the water. And, uh, it's really sweet, it's disgusting, so there's definitely something in here that isn't water anymore. So we need to try and understand where has the sugar gone? Um, and to do that we're going to do a little experiment and you can try this at home as well if you want to. So the experiment we have is pretty simple. If you look at what I've got set up here, I have a kitchen scale but because we're scientists, I'm going to call it a balance. I've got a new glass of water. You can see it's a different shape, so I know that this is clean water. And I've got my sugar again. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the mass of the... It says salt, but I'm actually using sugar. I'm going to find the mass before I do anything. So I need to turn on my scale, on my balance. And you can see it's reading zero. And now when I put the bowl with my uh, sugar in it, it says 259 grams. So I'm going to write that down. The mass before is 259 grams. Remember, we always put a unit when we're writing something. The next thing I want to know is the mass of the water and the glass together. So I'm going to put that on my balance. And you can see that the water, the water and uh, the glass as one thing comes to 403 grams. So again, I can just write that down on here. 403 grams. So now what I'm going to do is add some sugar to my water. So in we go. There's one spoon. And let's try and get a decent result. So I'll put two big spoons in and give it a stir. If you're doing this at home, keep stirring until you can't see the sugar anymore. Or the salt if you're using salt. It will work just as well with either. I okay, don't want to lose any drops because that will affect my experiment. So I asked for the mass of the salt bowl after I've added it. And if you have a look, it now says 248 
grams. I'm not sure if you can see the eight clearly on there, but that is an eight. Two, four, eight grams. So the first question to you is, can you work out how much salt have I added to the water? Or if you're trying to be clever, how much sugar have I added? What's gone from this bowl into the water? What's the mass that I have added to that? I'll give you a second to think about it. And you should work out that that will be 11 grams. So let's go back to thinking about those students. We had a load of different ideas here. Some people said that the uh, salt of the sugar has just disappeared and it's not there anymore. If it just disappeared and isn't there in the water anymore, what would you expect that the mass of the water would be? Okay, other people have said that uh, the sugar or the salt is still in the water and it still exists. So if that's the case, what would we expect the mass to be then? All right, let's measure it and find out. So, set this up again. Here is my water and my glass. And it now weighs 414 grams. 4, 1, 4 grams. Now, look at that. Usually, when I do science experiments, they never work the first time. And I was really worried about this one because I've only got a small amount of sugar left. But for this time, it absolutely worked perfectly. Think about this, 403 plus 11 grams is equal to 414 grams, which is exactly what we found. So what we've done is we've taken the water and we've added the salt to it. And we can see that the salt has got to still be inside the water here because its mass is still there. It's got, still got its stuff inside. So what's happening on a science level? Let's think about our actual sugar. Okay, the sugar in here is made up of tiny, tiny, tiny little grains. I don't know if you'll be able to see them on the camera. Um, but there we go, I've got a couple of grains on the tip of my finger you can just see. Now what would happen if I cut one of those grains in half? I'd end up with a smaller grain. And if I kept cutting and kept cutting and kept cutting, it would get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But it turns out that if I could keep on cutting it and keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually I'd find something that's impossible to cut. Now, I couldn't see this with my eyes. Um, it would be almost impossible to see it, in fact, without using super, super high-tech, uh, very expensive machinery. But eventually I'm going to get to something that is the smallest it can go. And we call that a particle. So the particle for, for year seven just means the smallest that something can be. So what do particles look like? If you think back to our last lessons, we know that in a solid, the particles should be regularly arranged and all touching. So in my salt or sugar, depending on what we're using, it's going to look like this. What about in the water? Well, in the water, I know that the particles are still touching, because if you remember in your experiments, you tried to compress water and you couldn't. So the particles in water look like this. They're a liquid. And I can't make those any smaller. So what's happening is I'm taking the salt or the sugar particles that are a solid and I'm putting them into this liquid. And when I do that, the process is called dissolving. And what it looks like is this. What happens is the liquid particles are still there and they're still liquid, but now the solid particles are broken up and spread out. And we call this a mixture. We're going to do, uh, in a couple of lessons time, the difference between atoms, elements, compounds and mixtures. But for now, you can just think of a mixture as different types of particles, all jumbled up, but free to move around. These particles can change their positions. So there's a couple of key bits of vocabulary that you need to know and understand. And they are on the board now. So you need to know the idea of a solvent. 
A solvent is the name of the liquid that something has been dissolved in. So in this experiment, what was the solvent? So the solvent was the water. A solute is the solid that is being dissolved in the liquid. So in this case, that was the salt. And then the solution is that mixture that we end up with at the end, that is the mixture of the solute and the solvent. So in this case, that is the salt water. That is the solution. Now, what I would like you to do for this is come up with your own way of explaining this in a way that makes sense to you. So you might be doing some questions for me, um, or you might be uh, doing some work in your book. It's up to you. But what I would like you to do is then think about planning your own experiment. So the experiment I want is how does the volume of water affect the amount of salt that you can dissolve in it? So volume means how much water you're going to use. So if you look at my measuring jug here, it is marked in volumes along the side here. Um, you can see it goes from zero down at the bottom, up to on this one, half a litre or 0.5 litres. So I could use a measuring jug to measure the volume, the amount of water. And I want to know the mass of salt that can be dissolved in it. So I'm going to use a balance to measure mass. What I would like you to come up with is an experiment plan to tell me how changing the volume changes how much I can dissolve. So what does that mean? If we go back to our definitions, there was a definition at the end there called saturated. Saturated is what happens when you can't dissolve any more stuff in a solution. So have a look at my water here. You can see that at the bottom, let's try and set this camera up nicely. At the bottom of here, there is nothing solid. But if I pour a load of sugar in and give it a stir, eventually, it doesn't matter how much I stir, there will still be solid left over. So the solute eventually can't be dissolved anymore. And you can see there are still some grains of salt left behind. So this is now saturated. I can't add any more in there. So what I want you to do is tell me, how does the amount of water that I start with change the total amount of salt that I can dissolve in there? I look forward to seeing what you can come up with in our lesson.